Okay, so here's how the experts decide to do their foreign policy. So the, the liberal-minded experts, when it comes to foreign policy, they tend to fall into the trap of thinking that moral absolutism is a substitute for real politics. So morality obviously plays a role in foreign policy, clearly. The United States is a moral country on the world stage. We try to be. We are the most moral country in world history on the world stage, which is why we've ended tyranny in a bevy of countries around the world, and we've freed hundreds of millions of people and raised billions of people from abject poverty. All of that can be true. It also happens to be true that there is no substitute for a good old-fashioned understanding of how real politic works. When George Washington talked about avoiding foreign entanglements, what he meant by that was that we always have to do what's in the best interest of America, because if you believe that America is the greatest, best hope for humanity, then America weakening itself through foreign entanglements that it has no intention on actually fulfilling actually makes it worse off. But the expert class have said that you don't need to worry about any of that sort of stuff. The expert class says, for example, that we must be invested in Iran moderating for no apparent reason. We must be invested in the notion that the Palestinian issue in the Middle East is central to all economics and all deal making in the Middle East. And none of that is true. This is what the expert class told us for years. And so when Joe Biden was running for president, he and his and his experts, they suggested repeatedly that they were going to crack down on Saudi Arabia, right? This was the moral thing to do, to crack down on Saudi Arabia. Now, listen, Saudi Arabia is a tyranny. So is pretty much every other country in that region. The question is whether that tyranny is good for the United States or bad for the United States, whether we get net benefit or net detriment from that tyranny. It doesn't mean that in the pie in the sky, best of all possible worlds, a thousand flowers would bloom and democracy would, would bust out everywhere and suddenly there would be uh, an, an insane amount of free speech and, and freedom of expression. Like that would be the best. True. It would also be unbelievable if all of our rivers flowed with milk chocolate. Like that would be an amazing thing. It would. It'd be like, it'd be incredible. There's, re, there's reality and then there's, then there's what you wish would happen. And our liberal elite class, particularly on foreign policy, they have a really bad habit of hoping that because they think they're in the moral right, that means that good things will follow. That is not, expert that is just actually kind of dumb. And so, for example, in October of 2020, 20, Vice President Joe Biden, he was then running for president, obviously, he made a statement on the anniversary of Jamal Khashoggi's murder. Okay, so Jamal Khashoggi was killed, you'll remember, in 2018. Okay, so it, the calendar now says it is 2022. In those intervening years, how many people have been killed by the Iranians in Syria? How many people have been killed by the Houthis in Yemen? In that intervening period, how many dissidents have been jailed by the Turkish government or the Jordanian government? How, ma how many terror attacks have been sponsored in Afghanistan by parties outside Afghanistan? But Jamal Khashoggi is top of news still in 2022. And that's because in 2020, there was a decision that was made by the left wing of the liberal establishment, the, the elites, the foreign policy geniuses who had brought about the Iran nuclear deal, which was a disaster. Their deal was that they were going to go hard after Saudi Arabia. They were angry at Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia was a particular problem now. Now, nothing Saudi Arabia does now is particularly different than anything Saudi Arabia has been doing for several decades at this point. The only thing that changed is that the foreign policy elite decided that they were going to make common cause with Iran, which, by the way, is what pushed Saudi Arabia and the UAE and a bunch of other Gulf states into peace dealing with the Israelis. So in October of 2020, Joe Biden went out there, expert that he is, that the professionals were back in charge, and he made a principled statement about the death of Jamal Khashoggi. Jamal Khashoggi had been a writer on and off for the Washington Post. He was also associated with the Muslim Brotherhood. Shouldn't have been murdered. Also was not a real advocate of Western democratic values, I would say. In any case, Joe Biden put out this statement. He said, two years ago, Saudi operatives reportedly acting at the direction of Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman murdered and dismembered Saudi dissident, journalist, and U.S. resident Jamal Khashoggi. His offense, for which he paid with his life, was criticizing the policies of his government. Today, I join many brave Saudi women and men, activists, journalists, and the international community in mourning Khashoggi's death and echoing his call for people everywhere to exercise their universal rights in freedom. Jamal Khashoggi and his loved ones deserve accountability under a Biden-Harris administration. We will reassess our relationship with the kingdom. We'll make sure America does not check its values at the door to sell arms or buy oil. Okay, so remember, this is Joe Biden's highfalutin expert statement about foreign policy. If you flash back, only about two years. And then you'll remember that in 2021, Jen Psaki, who was then the White House press secretary, she said that Joe Biden was basically going to try to cut Mohammed bin Salman out of the conversation entirely. So Mohammed bin Salman is effectively the de facto leader of Saudi Arabia at this point because the king of Saudi Arabia is very elderly and not in good health. And Jen Psaki was like, well, what if we just, we'll just pretend MBS doesn't exist, right? This is the elites. They're, they're geniuses. They don't care about your oil price. 
They don't care about how actual foreign policy works. What they care about is their own sense of, of self-worth. So here is Jen Psaki explaining the Biden administration position here. We're going to recalibrate our relationship um, with um, uh, Saudi Arabia and that, uh, you know, President Biden, uh, and one of the questions there was uh, also, just to go back to the context of it, uh, whether he would be speaking with uh, MBS. And part of that is going back to engagement counterpart to counterpart. The president's counterpart is King Salman. Uh, and I expect that an appropriate time, he would have a conversation with him. I don't have a prediction of the timeline on that. But I'll also say that, um, you know, we have uh, uh, Saudi Arabia is in a position where they are defending themselves from uh, from uh, threats from the region. Um, you know, they are uh, they have critical self-defense needs and we will continue to work with them on those, even as we make clear uh, areas where we have disagreements and where we have concerns. And that's certainly a shift from the approach of the prior administration. And while he was in Saudi Arabia, there'd been a big deal. Was he going to shake the hand of Mohammed bin Salman? This is a self-made problem. What Joe Biden should have said is, I shake the hands of a lot of heads of states of foreign countries who I think have done really terrible things. That's what being an international leader is. You're routinely in conversation with people you think do terrible things on a regular basis. So in order for the United States to achieve his objectives, that what, what am I supposed to do? Smack Mohammed bin Salman upside the face, like backhand him or something? So instead, Joe Biden had this whole stupid charade that he played with the State Department. Was he going to shake his hand? Was he not going to shake his hand? Was he going to pretend that it was COVID that was preventing him from shaking hands? Well, instead, Biden got out of his car and he immediately fist bumped with MBS, which, by the way, looks a lot more chummy than a handshake. The great irony is in trying to avoid the handshake, he looked much more chummy. Right? You fist bump with your friends. You don't fist bump with strangers. At least not really, except for COVID reasons. I mean, here is Joe Biden looking pretty chummy with MBS. So he gets out of the car very slowly because that is the only speed at which he moves. Man, he, he constantly looks like he's about to fall. And then he gets out and he fist bumps Mohammed bin Salman and they walk in together. Okay, and this launches the left into spasms of apoplexy. They're just so upset. We've been failed. We were told that you were going to stand up to the Saudis. And so you have, for example, Dana Bash asking Jared Bernstein, why is Joe Biden fist bumping a murderer? I want you to look at this image. I know you've seen it. Uh, the world has seen it. The fist bump. And... The reaction has been swift because this is a man who ordered the brutal murder of a journalist and then his body was dismembered with a bone saw. Jamal Khashoggi's fiance said if he were alive today, he would say, is this the accountability you promised for my murder? The blood of MBS's next victims is on your hands. Why is he fist bumping a murderer? OK, so I mean, this is how the media responds. Now, the real answer to this is that when Joe Biden was campaigning and then when he was president, he should have said, I'm in I'm doing what's in the best interest of the United States. We do need lower gas prices in the United States, which, by the way, is the other reason he should have embraced garbage environmental policy that cut down on the ability of the United States to be more oil independent of countries like Saudi Arabia. So Joe Biden has responded to this, as the experts typically do, by getting randomly angry at people and shouting at, at the clouds. So he was asked by a member of the media why he was fist bumping MBS and did he regret it? And Joe Biden starts basically ranting at the reporter for even asking the question. The Saudi foreign minister says he didn't hear you accuse the crown prince of Khashoggi's murder. Is he telling the truth? No. Do you regret the fist pump, Mr. President? Why don't you guys talk about something that matters? I'm happy to ask the question that matters. Why don't you guys talk about something that matters? Uh, well, I mean, you're the one who started this, sir. You and your expert class started this conversation. And then you're unwilling to, to finish the conversation. Joe Biden, by the way, claimed that he had confronted MBS about the Khashoggi murder, murder and the Saudi foreign minister was like, no, you didn't. That's not a thing that happened. I hope you enjoyed that clip from the Ben Shapiro show. If you did, go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you stay up to date with all our future content.